Hey, this is Trout Bitten. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do knot tying tips. I got 15 of them, maybe 16. Um, and by the end of this video, I bet there will be two or three things that you hadn't thought of before. And I say that because uh, we all kind of find our own systems. The anglers all kind of find their own ways of doing things, their own tips and tricks. And regardless of angler experience, we can all really learn from each other on these kinds of things. Now I talk a lot about being a versatile angler. And now versatility means you're changing things. On the river, changing means you're tying knots. And if maybe you're just changing the fly. That's pretty easy. Uh, maybe you need to change the leader or rebuild the leader to adjust for the situation. So as anglers, we have to have the facility to tie knots with ease. If it isn't easy, you won't do it. None of us will. And I meet a lot of anglers who have a lot of reasons why they're bad at tying knots. But the truth is, I think they maybe just haven't thought through the difficulties, like what makes this tough, and then found the solutions. And that's what we're gonna do here today. I got 15 good tips, and I will say, if you have some of your own tips, leave them in the comments section below. Are you ready? Here we go. So first tip, and these are all good tips. So first good tip is that you don't need a bunch of fancy knots. You need a couple knots to be able to splice line together. Uh, and I use a blood knot and a double surgeons for that. And then you need a couple knots to attach the fly, right? And a clinch knot and a davy should do you. Maybe a non-slip mono loop. I will say, okay, I'm gonna throw in uh, an Orvis tippet knot when I like to create a tag. We've done videos about all that stuff. And I'm not gonna teach you how to tie knots today. We just have some knot tying tips. And again, just keep it simple. You don't need a Palomar knot. Uh, Josh, what's your favorite complicated knot? Prusik. The Prusik, right? We don't need a Pitson. You don't need a Trilene knot. This is trout fishing, so don't complicate your life. Now, you might love those knots, and truthfully, if those are, if those are your go-to knots, use them. But you don't need a ton of complicated things out here. All right, so as I show you a few things today, I'm gonna to use some colored lines, so hopefully we see it well. One of the key things I learned early on is, is the holders and workers concept. You have these fingers, are the workers. They're the ones that work, do the job of tying the knots. And these two fingers on each hand are the ones that hold the line. Let me show you what I mean here. So I'll demonstrate by tying this blood knot. And you can see that I got these two fingers holding it, and then these three fingers do the job of tying the knot. Same thing on my left hand. I have these two fingers here, my pinky and my ring finger are the holders, and of course my other three fingers are doing the job. This is what I call a finger roll. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the next tip is don't try to save material. If you try to save material, you're gonna waste time. If you use more material to tie your knots, you're gonna save time in the long run. And that's, that's what we're trying to save out here is time, not the material. That said, once you get good with the knots, especially if you choose the right knots, you can use a nice long tag to tie the knot, but then tighten it up so that you only waste a little bit of material. I'll show you that here with a Davy knot. All right, so I'm gonna tie this Davy knot with a little bit of extra line. With all of that tag right there, that makes it easy to tie. You could do this real quick. And now, here's the key with the Davy. I'm pinching it really short, and pull, by pulling on the main line, I'm left with just a little tag. I used a lot of material to tie the knot. I ended up with only a short tag of wasted material. So another thing I learned a long time ago is to pinch the loop of your knot. Pinch the loop of your knot at the hook eye. Here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna thread this through. And now instead of holding the fly and trying to, you know, everything's slipping through and trying to tie my knot by holding the fly, I don't do that. I hold the loop. After you thread it through, I'm pinching, pinching beyond the fly there. And uh, I have a lot more control of things and I can easily tie my knot. All right, the next tip is, <laughs> well, you just gotta see the, you gotta see your line. You gotta see what you're working on and you gotta do whatever it takes. So that's why I got the glasses on. <laughs> Our friend Austin makes fun of me and he calls those my G3 readers. You get some real fancy $100 readers if it makes you feel good about your life. But uh, whatever it takes, you gotta be able to see. It. Don't fight it. Hey, this video is sponsored by Squala and I'm excited to tell you a little about them. Squala is a new brand in fly fishing and they're making some of the best apparel on the market today. Uh, Squala was founded by industry veterans and experienced anglers, and that's easy to see in the design and function of their gear. I've been wearing Squala stuff for about a year now, since last March, 
And you've probably seen me in these videos wearing this 3-2 Fusion Puffy and the carbon waders, and now these RS waders and the carbon wading jacket. Squala is making high-end gear built for anglers who fish hard. The attention to detail, the fit, the comfort level, and durability is unmatched. So I sincerely recommend everything that I've worn from Squala, and I'm excited to see what they build next. Now for a limited time, Squala wants to help the Trout Bitten audience try them out. Just go to squalafishing.com and use the code TROUTBITTEN10 for 10% off your next order. Thanks to Squala for supporting the Trout Bitten Project and for keeping all of us comfortable and ready on the water. All right, so along those same lines, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. And I've learned over time that I just need to find right there. There's a nice dark background for me. It's a lot harder for me to see what I'm doing. Let's, let's say into the glare that I have right here. I kind of find a dark background on the on the bank that I'm tying against right now. There's a dark moss right here. You want to see that. You want to have that contrast. To see what you're doing better. All right. So the next thing is just learn to use both hands. You might be very right hand dominant, let's say, but don't let that handicap you. Learn to use the left hand just as well. And you really need that in what I call the finger roll. Now, I showed that earlier with the blood knot. All right, now the next thing is to use your third hand, which is use your mouth out here. I use it for sort of repositioning, like I did right there. I'm tying this Davy knot, finishing it, pulling. Before I seated it real tight, I always moisten the knot. You just have to wet your knots. All right, the next thing is that you don't need a fancy knot tying tool and you don't need to use your forceps. The fastest tool, the best tool you have is your fingers. Get good with it, and you're gonna tie the best knots. Uh, I will say, sometimes I'll grab my forceps. If I'm tying and the loop is getting a little small, I'll use my forceps to kind of correct a mistake that I made and pull through a loop, something like that. Otherwise, it's my fingers. All right, so every knot needs to be seated in a certain way, so you wanna know what you're doing. A Davy knot, which I've been doing here a lot, uh, you never pull on anything but the main line. If you pull on that tag, you're gonna unseat the knot. When you're tying a double surgeons, for example, you have to pull on all four tags pretty evenly. You make sure they're all tight before you go clipping anything. All right, so the next thing is you wanna learn the speed that it takes to tighten the knot effectively. And there's differences in materials, there's differences in the knots. I remember sitting on the banks of one of my favorite streams and I had, I had bought a new tippet material. I'm trying to tie the knot and it kept, kept slipping out. And it just ended up that I needed to tighten it a little bit faster. But if you tighten it too fast, sometimes it'll burn, you know, burn the knot and you get like a pigtail. So let me show you what I mean here with a, with a clinch knot. All right, so I'm pinching that loop like I showed. I'm gonna do three, four, here come five wraps. I'm putting that through, wetting it. And now here I'm gonna pull it nice and even. And now it's seated. It's that speed of pull that I just know by using this material. Another thing to think about is to get everything aligned in your knot before you kind of seat it. You've seen it in some of these close-ups that you get the material ready and then you pull it. Get everything in place and then pull. All right, here's the next thing. You want to clip your knots flush. There's just no need to leave a tag end. If you have a good knot, if you've tightened it the right way, you need to trust that knot. It won't slip if you've done everything right. So clip it nice and flush. Don't leave those little tags. I'll show you what I mean here. And I mean, I'm gonna clip super flush. Another thing to think about is that it takes fewer turns in thicker material on a clinch knot, for example. Well, when I'm night fishing, I'll use 10 or 12 or even 15 pound Maxima Chameleon as my tippet. And I only need three or four turns uh, on a clinch to make that work. Uh, more turns make the knot wanna cinch down properly. However, if I'm fishing four or five or six X tip it out here, I'm gonna use five or six turns in a clinch knot. Uh, the same is set, can be said for a blood knot. If I'm splicing together thicker material, I really only need three or four turns. If it's thinner material, I might use five or six turns even in a blood knot. All right, so here's a mistake that I make every day. I'm trying to splice line together with a double surgeon's knot. And as I do this, I have tension on that line. You can see this cider here. I have, there's a little bit of tension. So that line is kind of trying to pull away from me. And I can do this. And if I'm lucky, that tension there won't affect me. The better thing to do is to just reel up there so that line isn't dipped into the water. There's no tension now. As I can just tie, tie the knot uh, without that extra hurdle, without that extra complication. All right, that's your knot tying tips. I hope that helps you out. I have one more for you though. 
Learn to tie knots at home. Don't learn knots on the water. Think about how many hours you have through the day. Not hours necessarily, but how many minutes you have throughout the day. So you could just be practicing knots here and there. Keep some random tippet spools around and practice just tying the knots at home. Um, if you learn to tie the knots and you are able to make the changes out here quickly, it's just a lot more fun on the water. Um, hope it helps you and I'll see you around. Fish hard, friends. And there's, a, there's just a lot of secret things that they do. And so if I told you about the black, I'd have to tell you about other stuff. And I'm not allowed. <laughs> hey, this video is sponsored by... Trout <laughs> fishing, don't complicate it. All right, so first tip, first good tip. These are all... <laughs> Come on, Dom. Uh, if you try to save material... Material... Nah. <laughs> I can just see that in the outro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I still look pretty. Yep. <laughs> Trout bitten guy. I mean, he knows what he's talking about. Thank you very much. Fish hard, friends. Suck it.